the government shouldn't really have a say in what we can and cannot have. It's the safest thing in the world when you know what you're doing. Everyone was screaming and yelling. All of a sudden I realized this was real. There's a shooter trying to kill us. Why did they do that? Let's talk to them. Let's figure this out. All these other countries, they don't have that problem. Aux états unis le droit au port d'armes est un droit très important, comme peut l'être la liberté d'expression. Tous les deux sont inscrits dans la constitution américaine, la loi suprême du pays. Plus précisément, on trouve ce droit dans le deuxième amendement de la constitution, un droit créé à la base pour permettre au peuple américain de pouvoir former une milice armée, par exemple au cas où le gouvernement deviendrait tyrannique et qu'il faudrait le combattre pour redevenir libre. Et c'est d'ailleurs l'un des arguments principaux des pro-armes, la liberté. Le truc c'est que avec la multiplication des fusillades dans le pays, des voix s'élèvent pour plus de contrôle des armes à feu, voire leur interdiction totale. Alors pour mieux comprendre pourquoi les américains sont aussi divisés sur cette question, on est allé à la rencontre de ceux qui défendent le droit au port d'armes, mais aussi ceux qui considèrent en avoir été victimes. Alors on est au nord de Tempa euh, en Floride et ici on a tout un tas de magasins, on a des magasins ici pour euh, acheter une nouvelle cuisine si jamais ça vous intéresse, on a un barbier, on a un restaurant ici et on a aussi un magasin pour acheter des armes qui s'appelle The Armory. On va aller le voir, le propriétaire de ce magasin, c'est l'un des plus jeunes propriétaires de magasins de vente d'armes de tous les états unis On va le rencontrer à l'intérieur de son magasin. Pick it up. It is empty. $3,500. Give him the Tavor, which is like one of those video game guns. This is called a Glock 43. Always double check it. Fun style where you're loading it and stuff. You know, there's two rounds in them. And then you need it, you cock it back. Then you have your 37 millimeter. So you would load it in here, close it. These are fireworks. Anyone can possess that. There's no license for it. Each one has a purpose. Mm. Some of them are, they're just play toys, mm. they're pretty. Yeah. There's, you know, there's always those ones that are like just super pretty ones that you had to have. There's guns that are super old. I have a huge collection of collector's ones. Pistols are a huge thing in America. A lot of people like to carry pistols with them. Say there's 100 people in that restaurant, probably 30 of them have a gun on them. We have a lot of guys that have come in and, oh, this gun's been sitting in a closet. Can you clean it for us? never been shot before, never been anything. They say in Florida or the U.S. there was like five million new gun owners that have never had a gun before, never wanted a gun before, but with everything happening decided, I need a gun. They're afraid of like unrest after the elections yeah. or riots. riots. They're afraid of break-ins, you know, with all the looting and stuff that's been going on, they're scared that even though there's a, there's a lot of good demonstrations and a lot of good protesting going on. Unfortunately, we have some bad people that branch off into riots and they're afraid that they might spill over into their neighborhood. Bon, on va faire un point. Effectivement, les ventes d'armes aux États-Unis ont explosé cette année avec la pandémie de Covid-19 et les tensions liées aux manifestations antiracistes après la mort de George Floyd. Très concrètement, il y a eu 5 à 10 millions de nouveaux propriétaires d'armes à feu enregistrés en 2020, dont 4 millions rien qu'au mois de juin après les manifestations Black Lives Matter. Par ailleurs, l'élection présidentielle peut aussi expliquer cette augmentation de la vente d'armes. Joe Biden veut en effet interdire les fusils d'assaut et limiter le nombre d'achats d'armes par personne. Et du coup, les Américains se ruent actuellement dans les magasins d'armes pour en acheter et en stocker. We had an incident here uh, where we thought we had a break-in. It took three minutes for us to get here, and it took three minutes for the police to get here. Somebody breaks in my home. What can happen in three minutes? You know, I could be dead in three minutes. Say somebody came in right now, screaming, "I'm going to kill everyone." They have a knife. We could take care of that situation. If it's somewhere at a restaurant, that can be resolved. Say we're in France, I don't know, do we throw a chair at them or something? And I think that we need to stop, you know, using it as a political tool and agenda and start saying, hey, it's, it's a constitutional right, ignore that. Now let's talk about how can we solve those problems, the school shootings, let's talk about mental health, let's talk about these children, you know, cy the cyberbullying, why did they do that? Let's talk to them, let's figure this out. And I think that's, we need to combat some other issues. It's not the gun. All these guns are here. All the guns in my house are there. Not a single one of them has killed anyone. You look 21. You're not 21? I'm six. Six? Are you gonna get a gun eventually? No! <laughs> like a water gun? <laughs> Super soaker? That used to be the way to do it.
For how long have you had a gun? Uh, since I was four. I grew up around them, so. <laughs> I personally go by the opinion of all gun laws are infringements. There should be no gun laws. I mean, you re regulate them a slight amount, but not much. The government shouldn't really have a say in what we can and cannot have. But the whole purpose of the Second Amendment was to fight back against tyranny within the government. If the government has an upper hand on us, we're just slaves in their mind. Donc dans le jeu, euh, arme un peu, un peu différente ici. Euh, il nous montre un lance-flamme, un vrai lance-flamme. Attends, qu'est-ce qu'il va le tester Je sais pas ce qu'il va faire. Alors là, je sais pas ce qui se passe. Oula, j'ai trop peur. friends that are within half a mile of here that I go, hey, man, I've got to test a gun today. Mm. Okay, cool. What, what are we shooting? We have the opportunity where we don't have a law that says we can't. As long as we're a certain amount of feet from our house, mm. we're allowed to shoot legally. So this allows us that opportunity to go out and okay. plink and stuff. Can you get that call on the phone? I don't like answering the phone. Okay. <laughs> Ici du coup on est à Chicago et on est à ce que l'on appelle un gun rage, c'est un endroit où on peut aller tester des armes, apprendre à manier des armes. Il y a beaucoup de gens qui viennent ici ces derniers jours et donc on va voir à quoi ça ressemble à l'intérieur. We are stern believe in the second amendment. The gun safety is, is the most important thing. It's the safest thing in the world when you know what you're doing. But we're going to go into one of our classrooms real quick. Is that okay? Never point it at anything you're not willing to destroy. Just always expect the gun to be loaded. Even if you know that the magazine is empty, you, you check the chamber, everything is good. Things can be a little crazy. Sometimes people are uh, feeling like they need to defend themselves. They come and we do concealed carry classes here. We do marksmanship classes here. We're very good at what we do. Il y a la constitution américaine et derrière il y a, il y a une arme. Et on voit que c'est vraiment ancré dans la culture en fait, du pays, ce qui, ce qui paraît assez étonnant par rapport à la France, évidemment, ça n'a rien à voir. Il y a même un journal apparemment, Gun News, c'est écrit tout simplement, publié chaque mois par Gun Save Life. Les armes sauvent des vies. We defend your rights, you defend yourself. On défend votre droit à vous défendre vous-même. Get a firm grip on the firearm. Keep your finger off of the trigger until, until it's downrange and you're ready to fire. They call it a ball ammo, like ball, ball round nose tip. This one will over penetrate. If you use it for self defense, you could hit the bad guy and maybe somebody behind uh. it. This is called uh, hollow head round. Yeah. It's, a, it's designed to expand when it hits tissue. Uh -huh. This is more for like a self-defense. All of the ammo is very, very expensive. Why is it expensive? Is it because of the current situation? I really don't have the answer, but people are panicking, people are overbuying, and that's how it works with the economy. When people want something, uh, uh, the panic, that's when everything goes. We have the safe, the fire function, and then binary mode. Makes it shoot fast. Okay. You pull the charging handle back and let go. Now it's ready. Fun mode? Okay. It's a little okay. different. Il faut savoir qu'ici, ce n'est pas seulement un lieu où on va tirer, c'est aussi un lieu où on va apprendre à tirer. C'est un élément qui est très important ici pour Joseph et les propriétaires de cet endroit. Vous le voyez ici, il y a plein de personnes qui vont apprendre à utiliser une arme ici. Ils apprennent avant d'avoir leur propre arme éventuellement, comment l'utiliser comme il faut. On voit que c'est un endroit qui est logiquement très sécurisé. On voit qu'il y a des caméras un peu partout ici. C'est un endroit qui est très sensible. Il y a des personnes de la sécurité qui sont là en permanence, puisque logiquement, il y a des armes. Donc, il faut faire très attention avec les gens qui rentrent et sortent ici. We more, uh, people with that it's never experienced it. Uh, more so now than, than I guess before. Yeah. In the climate that we're in, it's a lot more of people wanting to be able to protect themselves. Okay. But it's a sport as well. I mean, it's just not for self-defense. 
A lot of people come in here because they want to get better. We never say that, you know, you do it because you should. We say do it because you can, right? So you don't have to carry the gun, but you should know how to do it. You should know how to do something that you don't know how to do. Students and faculty at Northern Illinois University still in shock this noon hour, the day after this man opened fire in a classroom, killing five people before taking his own life. Three handguns and a shotgun. The shotgun and one of the handguns, a Glock 9mm, were bought legally in Champaign and picked up six days ago. We may never know exactly what prompted him to come here and kill. On est maintenant un peu plus au nord de Chicago, au sein d'un campus universitaire, celui de la Northern Illinois University. Et ici, le 14 février 2008, le jour donc de la Saint-Valentin, un homme est rentré dans une salle de classe à proximité, juste ici. Il a tiré sur la foule, cinq personnes sont décédées et 17 autres personnes ont été blessées. L'un de ces blessés, on va le rencontrer tout de suite, il s'appelle Patrick. Il va nous raconter ce moment qui a changé sa vie, comment est-ce qu'aujourd'hui il vit avec ce traumatisme et puis au-delà de ça, ce qu'il faudrait faire selon lui concernant le port d'armes aux états unis It happened in that classroom over here, Cole Hall. There were 15 minutes left of class. It was on Valentine's Day, February 14th. A man kicks the door open. He pulls out a big gun and just starts shooting at us. I didn't know what was going on at first. I hid under my desk. Everyone was screaming and yelling. All of a sudden, I realized this was real. There's a shooter trying to kill us. My injuries, I was in the hospital for about two days. Eventually I healed. I had a um, shot right at the bottom, um, top of my neck right here, um, the corner, and then I got shot in the arm. When it gets very cold outside, I feel a little bit of pain. Fireworks, loud noises, bangs, that still scares me today. If I hear a loud noise, I look. That was the noise you heard everywhere. Um, so and that was the first time I was ever in an ambulance too, so that was um, definitely interesting. L'interdiction du port d'armes au sein du campus, c'est une interdiction qu'on n'a pas dans tous les campus d'université. Par exemple, au Texas, un certain nombre d'universités autorisent le port d'armes. Les étudiants ont le droit de venir avec une arme sur le campus. Par ailleurs, là, le bâtiment qu'on voit euh, actuellement, il ne ressemblait pas à ça au moment euh, de la fusillade. L'administration de l'université a demandé aux victimes ce qu'ils voulaient faire de ce bâtiment. Et au final, donc, euh, ce qu'ont décidé les victimes de cette fusillade, c'est de conserver le bâtiment, mais de le transformer suffisamment pour qu'il n'y bah, ait pas de mauvais souvenirs euh, qui reviennent en se rendant euh, ici. This is the memorial. They had invited us over to see what it would look like and what it would envision and the parents of the five children killed. They came and they saw what their child's memorials would look like. And they also made a statue here that shows we can keep going and going and that we're still surviving together. Every year on Valentine's Day um, at 3.05 p.m. when the shooting happened here, the parents come out and they put wreaths memorial wreaths. They ring the bells five times for the students. And I remember um, Marianne's parents, they said, oh, there's a girl, she has a tattoo. And they're like, my daughter doesn't have a tattoo. But then when they saw her, I guess she did have a tattoo. Um, and they didn't know. And that's, you know, when they you know, lost it. You know, I do agree with the gun owners about mental illness. Um, but I don't think that it should be so easy to get big assault rifle guns like they use in Las Vegas, they use in Parkland, they use in Virginia Tech. That's where a lot of the deaths and injuries were. And you could have your handguns to protect yourself in your home and you could have your, you know, shotguns and things to, to go hunting, but we don't need multiple bullets and so many hundreds and hundreds of bullets and big guns because the only purpose for those is to kill as many people as possible. And in all these other countries, they don't have that problem. I feel so much safer there. I don't feel like people have guns around me and It's just so different out in Europe than here, and you know, I hope, I hope there's a change here in the United States. Yeah. You know, we can compromise. We're not going to ban all guns, but also we're not going to just remove all laws. Yeah. So can we meet in the middle to, you know, make sure everything's fine? Every time I come back here, I look at the tree to see how it is, and it just shows. In honor of the survivors of February 14, 2008, here stands the strength of NIU.
Ça fait plusieurs années maintenant que des personnes comme Patrick militent au quotidien pour un contrôle plus important des armes à feu aux états unis Et d'ailleurs aujourd'hui, selon plusieurs études, la majorité des Américains sont favorables à un renforcement des restrictions. En 2018, Emma Gonzalez, une lycéenne de 18 ans rescapée de la fusillade de Parkland, s'est faite connaître avec ses discours virulents contre Donald Trump. Alors pour l'instant, une interdiction totale des armes à feu aux états unis n'est pas du tout envisagée. Déjà parce qu'il faudrait changer la constitution pour ceux là, ensuite parce que le poids des lobbies pro-armes est encore très important au sein de la politique américaine et puis surtout parce que, comme vous l'avez vu, le port d'armes est très ancré dans la population et beaucoup de gens y tiennent encore aujourd'hui. Résultat, en 2018 aux états unis il y avait environ 393 millions d'armes à feu détenues à titre privé, c'est plus que la population américaine qui est de 328 millions. Alors si ce reportage vous a plu, évidemment pensez à vous abonner pour ne pas rater les reportages suivants et puis pour découvrir tous nos reportages, une playlist apparaît en haut à droite ou alors vous allez directement sur la chaîne, vous connaissez. Ça me semblait important et intéressant de vous montrer concrètement sur le terrain pourquoi cette question divise autant les américains. En tout cas, prenez soin de vous et on se dit à très vite pour une nouvelle vidéo.